tonight and to especially welcome our honored guest, His Holiness Pope Tawadros II, the 118th and current Pope of Alexandria and Patriarch of the See of St. Mark of Alexandria, who has very kindly offered to join us for this memorable evening in blessing St. Cyril's Theological College and in support of our Coptic Studies program here at Macquarie University. On behalf of the Darug people, I welcome you to this country of the Watamatical clan of the Darug Aboriginal nation. Kwaibidja Jamna Payala Janawi. Come here, we speak together. I especially welcome His Holiness Pope Tawadros II to this country. I am Julie Jansen of the Barabarungal clan of the Darug Nation. We are the Hawkesbury River people. I pay respects to the local Aboriginal elders, past and present, and to the ancestors of this land, the knowledge and culture. I welcome people of all nation and faiths. Help us to respect the history and protect the environment. Your Holiness, Chancellor, Consul General, distinguished guests, and indeed one and all, welcome to you to Macquarie University. It is my great honour to welcome you to Macquarie University this evening for this remarkable event. Your Holiness's visit to our campus is a profound compliment to this university and to work that we have undertaken over many years in Coptic Studies program within our Department of Ancient History. So today, in the container of the history of Australia and the Diocese of Sydney, we added one more valuable memory to the container of the history of our Coptic nation here in Sydney. I mean by this, the visit of the successor of San Mark to us here tonight. Your Eminence, Your Excellencies, dear Father, and sister and the brothers. It gives me a great pleasure to be with you here tonight. Your warm welcome has deeply touched my heart. Tonight, I am delighted to talk to you about our Holy Mother Church. about its roots, its fruits, and also what about the Coptic Orthodox Church today. First of all, I would like to talk about our roots, because without roots there is no fruits. Our church has many deep roots that make it one holy, universal, and apostolic. The first root from the Old Testament, prophecy of Isaiah, Egypt was mentioned very early and several times in the Holy Bible, as it was placed in the book of Isaiah, chapter 19, verse 19, in that day shall there be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt, and pillar at the border thereof to the Lord. I believe that the altar, that altar refers to the Christian faith that came to the heart of our country, and the pillar should be an apostle and spread out the face. This prophecy in the Old Testament before the birth of Jesus Christ by seven centuries at least. I always remember verse 25 of that chapter as well, whom the Lord of the host shall place saying, blessed be Egypt, my people. So as you can see, the Church of Alexandria, with its fathers, had a major role in the Orthodox teachings. That's why it's held title ecumenical master. 
The second fruit, generally, is the martyrdom, martyrs church. Tertullian, the early Christian author, wrote, if the martyrs of the whole world were put in one arm of the balance, and the martyrs of Egypt on the other, the balance will tilt in favor of Egyptian. Martyrdom never stopped in our history till now. As His Holiness blessed the families of the clergy of our diocese, he called up the priests after their children and then their wives, in order of importance, of course. And so as I went up, all the priests were standing around him, but I decided that I would pretend to be humble. And I put myself at his feet, and all, all the other priests were quite distracted. I looked up at His Holiness, took out my phone, and looked at him and said, Selfie? <laughs> and he looked at me, nodded, and then looked at me and said, Cheeky. And I said, oh, I'm so sorry, Sedna. He said, no, 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 it's a good Cheeky. <laughs> and so in that spirit, I pray His Holiness allows me for a few minutes to extend that good Cheeky to tonight as well. It is often the case that these celebrations do just that, they celebrate. More often they'll single out three or four individuals worthy of honour and then proceed to celebrate their honour. But if I may, this has never been the tradition of the Orthodox Church. It is, forgive me, and please don't excommunicate me, a human form of honour, not a divine form of honour. A divine form of honour, that which I'm suggesting tonight, looks ever so differently. It does not simply thank people, though there are many here that are worthy of thanks. It does something else. It is radically different. In the Epistle to the Philippians, St. Paul describes this divine form of honour. Interestingly though, though this is the most commented upon piece of scripture by any of the church fathers, it is perhaps the least well-known piece of scripture by modern day Christians. Indeed, it's a privilege that I get paid to pass on what I know about the Coptic language and culture and uncover more about Coptic history through my research to investigate neglected sites, publish new texts, and save people in the past from being lost to history by connecting them back to the present. Your Holiness, may I extend a very warm welcome to you on behalf of the President and Council of the Sydney College of Divinity. Your visit um, is a momentous event, not only for our Coptic brothers and sisters, and St. Cyril's Coptic Orthodox Theological College in particular, but also for the whole of the SCD community. In the SCD community, as has been said, our ecumenical identity means that we support our shared goals and care for each other's good. And if I may say, I was so thrilled to hear in your address the attention you drew to the fact that the underlying principle of ecumenism that means anything is love. And also, I'd like to thank Father uh, uh, Daniel for reminding us that service, humble service, um, is what real leadership is about. I want to thank His Holiness for honouring us by his presence and illuminating us by his wonderful address. I hope that this will not be His Holiness's last visit to Australia or his last visit to Macquarie University. I'm sure His Holiness has already been informed that Macquarie University is a relatively young university. We're just over 50 years old, much younger than me. But in that time, I can assure you we are not only one of the youngest universities, we are also far and above all of the other universities in Australia. We are the best. And one of the reasons for that is that we have Australia's best ancient history department and the only Coptic studies program. And we're very proud of both. I would now like to call on the Honourable Michael Egan, Chancellor of Macquarie University, to present His Holiness with a small token of appreciation and a reminder of his visit to Macquarie University. Already done.
You get too fast. <laughs> now, I'm sad to say our formalities have now come to a close. I would like to thank all of our speakers this evening, especially His Holiness, for joining us this very, for this very special event.